Hello, hello. It is a beautiful, sunny, and hot day today, and I'm excited to get some new plants in the ground. I went and I purchased a few different plants, mostly plants that um, have a much longer growing season. So if I had put them in, uh, put the seeds into the ground, then they wouldn't have had enough time to grow uh, to produce before the end of the season, before it starts getting cold again. Uh, so I, I also started some of my own seedlings, but some of these I just went ahead and purchased some from, from the professionals, uh, and I'm gonna put those in the ground today. I'm also gonna so, show you some other transplants, um, just some peppermint that I moved from my garden last year. I also wanted to show you this handy little tool. It's just a watering wand. This is something that I sort of kicked against purchasing because uh, I thought I could just use the hose, use my fingers and the sprinklers that I have. Uh, but I broke down and went ahead and just bought one. Um, it's the simplest little tool, but it's so handy and I would definitely recommend, uh, especially because it has like a mist and a shower setting on it that are really gentle. And that's really, really good for those tiny, tiny little seedlings that are in the ground. This is the peppermint that I transplanted from my garden last year. It was actually just one peppermint plant and we dug it up, separated it into six different peppermint plants, and I'm sure these will spread as mints love to do. That's fine with me because I love peppermint. And here I am actually preparing to plant the leeks. Now, leeks are actually supposed to be um, planted individually. Um, but these ones were so small that I kind of decided I would go ahead and just put them in together, let them grow a little bit larger, and then separate them. I'm not positive if that was the best option, but I just didn't feel comfortable with separating them just yet. So I'm going to put them in here and uh, let them grow a little bit. Um, and what you want to do when you're putting a plant in is just make sure you have a big enough space. And then you'll pull the plant out and you'll just want to try to get get the whole thing out make sure you're getting all the roots and not tearing anything up too much so you just kind of squeeze it out and then once you have it out you kind of want to take um, the roots and sort of separate them um, just spread them out a little bit so that they can grow out into the ground i'm not sure that you do this with every single plant but um, that's generally i think a, a good rule of thumb that you sort of want to separate those roots out and then you just put it in and I like to keep the little tabs that come with the plants. Um, they, sometimes they give helpful information but mostly I keep them just so that I know uh, what plants are where and this can be helpful for, for plants that aren't as distinctive as leeks. Here we have cantaloupe same deal. Um, I have, I'm have. i going to prepare these spots and then put them in. Uh, same sort of process as the leeks. Nothing too special to it. Um, the cantaloupe is a, is a little bit more, um, you have to be a little bit more careful with it uh, just because it's a little bit more fragile. Um, So I'm having a little bit of a change of plans today. I knew that it was supposed to get windy, but I didn't know how windy it was supposed to get. I just looked and it's looking like it's gonna be really windy this afternoon. So I've decided to hold off on planting the tomatoes and peppers that I bought. Uh, and this is because they're so delicate, they'd probably be fine, but I know that the weather's gonna be good tomorrow, so I can just push it off and plant them tomorrow. And that is a perfect illustration of another really key part of gardening, and that's the weather. Um, if you really want to garden, then you're going to have to check the weather, <laughs> be watching, uh, making sure it's not going to freeze, making sure it's not going to hail, rain, wind, whatever might be the case in your area. Um, weather is key. And now that I have some new stuff in, in the garden, I'm going to make sure and record it 
uh, both the date and then I'll also fill it in in my little map. That's just so I know where things are <laughs> and where I did them, making sure that um, if I have any companion crops uh, or things that I make that I don't want to be together, that just helps me stay organized. This is just something I do to, to stay organized. Some people would probably think that's crazy. Others probably do more organization than this. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, it's a new day, not as windy today. We just have a little bit of a breeze, but I don't think it'll hinder the planting. I'm going to show you planting some of the plants that I purchased as well as some of the seeds that I have. I won't show you at all because that would be way too much and super boring, I'm sure. But if you have questions or things you'd specifically like to see, please leave those in the comments. Hope you enjoy. Here I'm preparing the ground for this red pepper plant, red bell pepper. Um, it's going to be the same thing as those other ones. This one's just a little bit larger. Uh, but I'm just going to gently pull it out of its, of its uh, casing here and then put it in the ground. One thing I am going to do with this plant, because it's a pepper plant and thus a little bit more delicate, is stake it. So I'm just going to put uh, a little stake right next to the plant, tie the plant to it. This helps the plant uh, just be a little bit more strong in case there's any kind of significant wind or anything like that. Here I'm preparing a mound for some spaghetti squash seeds. Spaghetti squash, uh, cucumber, cantaloupe, zucchini squash, all of these are members of the cucurbit family and they're basically just vines that um, can grow on the ground. They can also climb but uh, here I'm just putting the spaghetti squash on the ground. I'm gonna plant some seeds and I'll also do a spaghetti squash plant, which I'll show you in a little bit. All I'm doing is just creating a little bit of a mound and then pressing these seeds into the mound about an inch. I'm doing three seeds for this mound. Next, I'm going to do the spaghetti squash plant. This is a great example of uh, something that you can do in plant or seed form. It's really just about preference. Uh, certain things you either have to purchase a plant or start seedlings indoors prior to the last frost date. At least that's true in our zone here uh, because we have a shorter growing season. But spaghetti squash, that's not necessarily true. It's really just about preference. Uh, some people might like to purchase plants uh, because it's a little bit more satisfying. You actually feel like you have a garden right away. Uh, it does cost a little bit more. I personally prefer to use mostly seed. Uh, it's a lot cheaper and I love the satisfaction of there being nothing but y you knowing there's the seed in the ground and then getting to watch that seed push through um, and sprout. That's really satisfying. So anyway, really just about preference. This part of my garden is completely dedicated to herbs. I chose this spot specifically um, because it does have a little bit of a barrier from wind uh, and that's important particularly for what I'm doing right now, which is dill. Uh, when you're planting dill, you just put it right in the, on the top of the surface, you just press it in. Um, you don't put it down at all because it needs light to germinate and a lot of herbs uh, don't go deep into the surface at all. So I wanted them to be a little bit protected. I also prepared this part of the garden beforehand by mixing in some potting soil. Uh, any kind of organic material is great, but that's important um, for herbs especially. It just helps them germinate and helps them get going. Mm -hmm. 